come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. And our quest for total world domination. Hey, you can help us out with that by going over to wherever you found us, hitting that like or subscribe button. All of that stuff helps us rise through the algorithms to become the fastest growing podcast in the galaxy. These are the internet radio superstars. Holly. Sean. Michaela. And I'm Colin. I almost said Michaela. (laughs) I don't know why. I don't know why. It was on the what? tip of my tongue. And I was just like, that's not me. Because, Sean, you've already jumped to the next question. You've already jumped to the next question. I think so. I don't know why. I'm just like, whoa. Yeah. It's the order from the uh, it is. quarantine from, days. From a year of, yeah, yeah, yeah. trying to figure Holly, out Zoom. Michaela, Sean. So I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I know my role. I'm I Michaela am, right now. I am Michaela. Well, speaking of which, who chose tonight's movie? Sean. Oh, fuck. I did it again. <laughs> Michaela chose tonight's movie. Movie. Michaela, what do we watch? We watched Shoot 'em Up. Ooh, Shoot 'em Up from the year 2007. A magical year we have determined it in is. Hollywood. It is a magic year. Mm. It is one of the good years. Please explain. No Country for Old Men. Zodiac. Yes. Zodiac. Yes. Oh, lots of others we've named. In previous episodes. Um, Honestly, just Zodiac had me. The funny, the funny games remake. It, it, it is a good oh, year. Yeah. Like it is, we'll, a, it is one of the best years in cinema. If you go back and look, it is like top to bottom a great year. It's like the next year. It's 1982 all over again. Yeah, right. well, yeah, yeah, it really I is. That's what we got to figure out. There's like a magic year in each decade. Yep. And I think 2007 is the strong contender for the 2000 to really? 2010. Yes. I think so. Well, yeah. All right. This I is also so. this is a very basic. This is the start of our journey into okay. this. All so right. as of right now, I think so. <laughs> but we've talked about this before. Yeah. We, about how 2007 it, is a magic year. Was it 2017 that was a good one? Or was it 18? It was 17, right? 17 was amazing. 17 yeah. was a great year. Because so, 17 had Logan and Get Out and yeah. a, a bunch of other. That was the year that like movies. we all had a really hard time narrowing down our top five list. Yeah. That was the year that by the time April rolled around i had seen like five movies already that were amazing yeah yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I remember 17 that, yeah. was a good year mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we will do more research 2007 all right okay. we'll do more research mm-hmm. but okay. there's a thing i would have thought it was yeah. 2003 but we'll have to circle back on that so well, why wait, wait hold on what do you think well, from 2003? i'm a horror guy so that was like the year of the remake and like they started coming out with like all those they're, but were they yeah, it was also yeah. like the j horror invasion oh, yeah. and all that yeah. stuff and it might have been the beginning of Torture porn. Uh, so <laughs> the uh, uh, that's right. It's a work in progress. Yes. Who's shoot 'em up directed by Michael Davis? Who is Michael Davis? He's a guy that uh, writes movies and then shops them around for years to decades to get them made, and somehow ends up getting them made. How uh, many of them uh, yeah. are we talking about? Uh, I'm okay. Are you so talking he, about this movie? That's how this movie got made. But um, he's I, a couple movies he's made that I don't like. He tells me these are real movies. I've never seen them. <laughs> um, like 100 Girls, Eight Days a Week. Those are all movies he wrote and directed. Mm. Uh, he's only done one thing since Shoot 'em Up, mm. and that was in 2013. But otherwise, everything else, I'm like, I've never heard of this. Girl Fever. Oh, okay. So Shoot 'em Up is like an actual like movie movie. It's, it's the really only, part. I would say it's the only real movie he's made, is what <laughs> I would say. Did he write this as yes, well? He like did. you said, he yeah, wrote this he wrote and shopped this. it around yep. for a while? Mm-hmm. So he shopped it around for a long time and no one would bite. So he made like a short animated like film version of it. Yeah, animatics and, and shit. And Clive Owen was like, and he told Clive Owen, you know, I wrote this role specifically for you. You are my number one choice. I don't want to do it without you. And Clive Owen saw the animation and said, I'm in. There you go. And, there you uh, go. $40 million your, later, you got a movie. Get so. your star attached. <laughs> yeah. That'll do it. That'll yeah. sell the foreign rights. Well done, yeah. Clive. Well done. Well, and you know, this is part of my... Uh, our second summer into blockbuster like bombs in this sure. movie, forty million dollar budget, twenty six million dollar box office, oh, mm. and it only did five million its opening weekend and twelve million domestic oh, overseas is what gave it its biggest when, box office. When was this released? I think it was a summer release. Yeah, was it? I think so, or maybe like a this? September release. I think. Okay. I remember yeah, seeing I remember. a lot of. I remember seeing the we ad had campaign. Oh, yeah. When I worked there, I remember. But I that. remember <laughs> no interest in seeing it. Yeah, because I think a ton of ads. Ton of ads. But it was yeah. like uh, the the way that I remember it. It was that it was kind of like it's a big action movie, but it's got Clive Owen, who wasn't really like an action. But he was coming off of Children of Men, doing like, and, like, and that's an action. I feel like this was like. 
his he, time. Clive yeah, Owen. yeah. Is this he is, an action guy? Here's the he th- this is what I I and Paul Giamatti. <laughs> Clive Owen is one of my favorite actors Don't like of all time, <laughs> but I find his career to be confusing it is uh, like it he does he did dramas for a long time and he was really good and really successful at that and then i don't know if he wanted to make this pivot or hollywood thought he should make this pivot but yeah it's like right around children of men and sin city then he starts yeah. doing action movies but they're not really successful because no one went and saw fucking children of men in theaters either no. that movie was a financial failure as well yeah. and then he kind of went back to dramas after that I remember seeing Derailed in theaters. You remember that one? <laughs> oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah With uh, Jennifer Aniston. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. that's completely out of my mind. <laughs> yeah, because it was like a big deal because it was her first movie in forever or something right, like exactly. that at that oh. point in time. And it really? was like, yeah. an, it was not in her wheelhouse. She right. usually does like romantic comedies and this was like a, a drama, thriller, right. thriller yeah. action kind of movie. Yeah. I don't know why... Why don't American audiences buy into him as an action star? I, I, right. I think why he not? may be a little boring. Yeah. I think he's boring. <laughs> Honestly. I, I, but, I, but is I that would the, say, is that the, is that the, is that the character Coming that he's from playing? Coming from two men. Can yeah. Just say I, would, that I would say. Men? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I would say he's stoic. I wouldn't say he's boring. Okay. Stoic. Again, mm-hmm. I'm not. I, I'm not the biggest Clive Owen fan. I like certain things I've seen him in, but you're right. In watching this movie, I don't know. What Clive Owen would really be. like, I the, I don't know if this is a character, him acting like this is kind of a blank because dude it's, well, it. it's very close it's to, to the Sin City character. Yes. Yeah. I guess that's you know I feel like that's why he was cast in this. Yes, mm-hmm. is because like because he's almost playing the same kind of deadpan, doesn't react to anything. Right, you know nothing phases this guy. He's like that in Children of Men as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He has <laughs> which no is, reaction to anything in that movie, which is why I'm wondering: Is Clive Owen a good actor? Yeah, because he's been I am stuff. sorry, Closer how dare Have you seen Closer? Oh saying, my god. Closer? I haven't seen oh a lot god. of yeah. Clive Owen. You have this not seen you have not lived till you've heard him get up in Julia Roberts' <laughs> face and be like, you dumb fucking cunt. Like <laughs> right in her face in Closer. Like, I mean, yeah. okay. I'm yeah. sold. I'll yeah. watch that. There's a reason why he got Fuck nominated off for an Oscar. Fucked up slag. Yeah. Yeah. He says that to Julia Roberts. Yeah. <laughs> I love that There's movie. There's a reason why he got nominated for an Oscar for that movie. Like Does he say it like Clive Owen? Yes. Yes, exactly. He does. Well, I might have a problem with that. I don't know. I don't know. I let's. I have no. Uh, I guess I have no His hard charm thoughts. Doesn't on, work on, on you. Huh? I mean, no. So the movie they were selling it on, like it's an action movie. It's action from beginning to end. You're going to see it because of that, right? But I remember at the time there was, and that's why I'm trying to remember what the movie was. But I think it was Smoke and Aces. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. And mm-hmm. when was Crank? And really, Crank was the year before this. Okay. 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 That and sense. that plays yeah. into my theory. I think people didn't go see this because Crank was enough. I think people saw Crank and they were like, I'm good on that shit. And like Crank, I, I don't particularly care for. I find it an exhausting movie and just not particularly enjoyable. But yet this movie I feel differently about. And I don't know why, because I feel like they're the same I was, tone. I was going to say it feels like the same tone. Yeah, it's, it both. is very similar tone. But I think I think American audiences were like, we only need one of these a decade. You yeah. know, like they don't, yeah, we don't need them often. <laughs> yeah. So like you yeah. can only have one unfriended or one hardcore yeah, yeah. Henry, or, you know, you right. need a whole bunch of yeah. these. And this we'll was just, like, yeah. but there, but this genre is still going on because it feels like the John Wick movies was basically like yep. the next yes. step. And now everybody's doing, they're still doing that, right? Yes. Like, which is basically, we're going to stuff a movie from beginning to end with action scenes pretty much nonstop, right? And we're still going to have like a plot and storyline taking place during action scenes, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That is yeah. the gist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Crank being, I don't know if it's the first, but it's the first like it major was the first on mainstream the radar one. Run. Yeah. Well, yeah, I remember. Yeah. I mean, I thought like uh, you know, going back to like the original First Blood was like that. You know, if that was like the first, we're gonna, you know, that movie just moves like from mm-hmm. beginning right. to end. But this is more. This imp- uh, they're more kinetic and dependent yes. on action. This is more have- of the newer. Uh, more fast cutting, and like you yeah. said, depending yeah. on action and mm-hmm. you know the kinetic energy to keep you going from one scene to the other. Yeah, mm-hmm. and like, this, this one is... uses a lot of uh, the. There's not like a lot of score, right? This one uses a lot of like metal. Soundtrack. It yeah. is. Wh- Soundtrack, it, yeah. this, okay, is this a movie or is this a gun fu music video? Mm. Yeah. A, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And if it comes down to that, I guess it's just how much fun you have with it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But like. But it's, but it's what you want, though, isn't it? Like it's called shoot 'em yeah, up. Yeah, well, it's shoot 'em up. I suppose with that title, yeah. right? I mean, this is gonna be, we're going to deliver. You know, it's Let's, a shoot 'em up movie. Yeah. Let, I mean, I'll, what I what I thought of was I just came off of watching the new Mortal Kombat this weekend, mm. and this was a palate cleanser because uh, yeah. this gave me what I wanted. You know what I mean? Like, how would you feel if I told you this is the most divisive movie in the relationship with my husband? <laughs> <laughs> 
What? This is the <laughs> what? All right, uh, please explain. Story time. Uh, he, he, he got to the carousel scene in this movie and said, I'm out. I can't watch any more of this, which is like 10 minutes in, maybe 15 minutes. What? And uh, I was like, what? He, and he was like, well, I just don't like gun fu movies. He was what? like, he was like, if it's swords and shit, that's one thing. He was like, but guns, I just don't like it. And I, when I told him I was going to bring this to the freak show, he was like, well, I won't be home when you guys are, well, oh, I'm not going to watch it. Oh, and so wow. I said, okay, I'll wait till we come back and then I'll bring it so you don't have to watch it. Mm-hmm. Damn. And then he was like, what are you bringing to me? I said, I'm finally bringing Shoot Him Up. And he was like, thank God I don't have to watch that movie and I can just sit at home and play video games and I don't, like, he what, fucking he, hates this movie. Is he playing a Shoot Him up video game no no he's not just checking yeah but i I think like i think clive owen is the tipping point for everybody in this movie though i think think so you either like it's just like an added level of delight or Mm -hmm. not to this movie you know what i'm saying like yeah i think men are threatened by clive owen (laughs) i think that that's a valid theory (laughs) he's not in my world can you be threatened by someone in your world yeah i think that's more it he's like a you know when watching this i'm like something a threatened threatened man would say that's what was going through you guys are just proving my point i i initially (laughs) wanted to do a whole summer of clive owen movies and now i'm now i'm thinking about doing it because i'm seeing the reaction here even if the guy is because i guess this is where i'm trying to judge the performance and i realize i'm going to say something here that's uh you know uh Chuck Norris and uh, Charles Bronson <laughs> had right. careers where they were robots, basically. Holly wow. Michaela just left the room. Wow. <laughs> so uh, Clive Owen is kind of like his performance in this is in that like genre. You're going to be mm-hmm. a tough guy in a movie where everything happens around you and you just kind of walk in and blast right. everything. Right. As far but as it's I know, Clive Owen, it's like. I don't know. There's something I feel like Chuck Norris could actually, like, you know, kill me. Or Charles Bronson could probably kill right. me. Clive Owen, like, man, I don't feel like, it's yeah. not, like, that's not his thing. He's playing this, but in real life, he's not killing people. Like Chuck Norris and Charles Right, Bronson. Chuck Norris Do you think they're killing me. people oh, yeah. in real oh, life? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. They're, they're right. the bodies, right. there are mounds. Right. There are pits yeah. of yeah. Chuck yeah. Norris yeah. victims. The NRA, so yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Steven yeah, they might Seagal be. is yeah. right. There's, yeah. There's, I mean, like I said, you guys have only seen, clearly only seen one coin, one side of the Clive Owen coin, and that's the action side. Watch closer and tell me that guy's not a good fucking actor. I vouch for that Yeah, like... That movie, okay, that is a movie for me, like, I'm in a bad mental state if I'm choosing to watch that movie. Yeah. Like, if I'm like, yeah. I'm in the mood to watch Closer, like, Michaela you should keep I, an eye on me. Michaela you know? and I have actually, like, had text conversations about this. I'm like, she, she texted me one day, I was like, oh, I'm just watching Closer. She was like, are you okay? <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm not doing good this week. And she's like, I can tell you're watching Closer. This, yeah. is, when, this is when you go back to, you're yeah, like, I just yeah. Oh, Every, yeah, everybody yeah. has those movies. When right? I feel, like, very jaded about the world, <laughs> yeah. like, that's the movie I watch. Because yeah. I'm like, yeah, Clive Owen, you're fucking right. Like, yeah. <laughs> and he's, oh, and he's a total, like, brute in that movie. Yeah. Like, a total brute. Mm-hmm. Stay tuned yeah. for our episode on Closer yeah. at some point. <laughs> I think there's a side podcast that's about to be right. spun off called, <laughs> called Closer. Yeah. Closer with Closer Colleen McKay. Closer, Closer to Clive. Closer to Clive. Closer to Clive. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Trademark it. Somebody yeah. do it. <laughs> Trademark uh, 2021 Saturday Night Freak Show. Yeah. And at the last episode, Clive Owen comes on. Yeah. Yes. That, I, that would be amazing. <laughs> I don't think he's doing anything. I mean, he's, he's doing terrible bit parts in Valeria, and that's what he's doing yeah. now. That's oh, the yeah. Thing. I saw that. I want that. better for him. Like, his career. I don't understand why it is where it is. Everyone says The Nick is a good show. I'm oh, yeah. never going to watch it. Sorry. Intruders, I'm, I'm never going to watch it. Intruders is a bad movie. Nobody yeah. saw that. You don't nope. even know what nope. I'm about. I thought about bringing that, though. <laughs> I know what it is, but yeah. I've never seen it. Yeah. 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 Oh. Um, okay, so uh, uh, Paul Giamatti is Paul also Giamatti. in the yes! awesome. There we go. And another, another unlikely action, uh, you know, Psh, casting. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's something you didn't know you wanted until you got it. It's, uh, it's delightful. <laughs> it's it's wonderful. I it. And he's just, he's he's going for it. I, I love, love that Paul Giamatti will go for it. I love unhinged Paul Giamatti. Yeah. It's pretty great. It. He even went for it with the facial hair. Yes. Because it's... Yeah, that was a purposeful thing, Sean. You asked that, and I thought that was interesting because I was researching this movie. They said that like they decided on a comb over, and then they like purposely shaved his did they like, it incorrectly? Okay, his protein I was correctly wondering because I'm like to make That's him look messed up. Worse. Beard, yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow. And like we were talking about the way he talks in this movie, so that you only see his bottom teeth when he's talking mm. is really weird to watch and unsettling. And does he have like an intercontinental like accent? In this movie, like he's more. Is that just me hearing shit? I thought I heard I didn't him. Hear it. Like, like chew a, it up a bit. He's more. always yelling, like but, a transatlantic. Accent? Yeah, tra- yeah, yeah. That's what it sounded like, kind of. Really? 
I, I think so. But this is, I mean, this is a, uh, a mustache twirling Paul yeah, Giamatti. Like, yeah. like, that's your bad guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Could have just yeah. been that he was just more pronounced, Maybe. which is like the heart of trans- Transatlantic. So right. And I think Maybe so. that's it. Yeah. it. It was not unlike his performance in Big Fat Liar. You guys ever saw oh, that movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Well, it's, I mean, he was blue in both movies. So. Yeah, but he was just like he was screaming, vein throbbing in that whole movie too. So. Yeah. So he's got the uh, the Gary Oldman part from like the professional or something yes. like that. Yeah, just pretty gonna, much. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Everyone. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. Uh. He, and he. Well, we'll come back. I guess to who these guys. And the other major player is uh, Monica Bellucci, mm-hmm. who I think is probably also not a box office draw, at least in this country, but may have helped overseas. That's, which is a big which star. Which is a fucking shame. I know she's it's, wonderful. She like, is. Like when she pops up and stuff, I was like, "Oh, nice to see you." Like yeah. that's always my reaction to her. Yeah. Like I thought she might save Spectre, and I was wrong. Yeah, yeah. It took a while, like <laughs> you said, for her to become a Bond girl because it seems like she was a shoe in for yes. Brand new. right. Yes. Yeah. Um, that's she's still married to Vincent Cassell, I believe. I so. think so. Wh- yeah. Who who is like. I don't want to say the European Clive Owen because Clive Owen is British, but like he is like he is like the European cinema Clive Owen. Like I can see basically. that. Like, I like I like him. I like yeah. I like him more than Clive Owen though. But yes, I see what you're saying. Yeah, they have the same kind of face shape, yeah. and it, see, they play a lot of similar roles too. Right. Where do we first see uh, Monica Bellucci? Because I remember her. She was one of the brides in Bram Stoker's Dracula, right. the first yeah. couple of movie. But yeah. it seems to me she was in like you know some foreign art films around that time and then yeah um i mean her and vincent cassell were in irreversible it, that's yeah. right I was that gonna, I was gonna, we always end up back but i that. never like that was a dvd i had and i was like why do i have this yeah. <laughs> i'm never gonna watch this again yeah i feel gross having it in my house yeah <laughs> yeah i also owned a copy and uh got rid of yep. it at one yeah. point uh, yeah. like, yeah. you yeah. feel like it's like one of those uh whatever it's the you know it, at, at first you like you book, like right? it because you're like I got this fucked up thing and yeah. then like yeah. after a while you're like, like why do I, I have, have this fucked, fucked up, up thing because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, you yourself uh, or if you have it so you gotta get rid of that fucking um so yeah she was also you this guys is seen, bad for uh, my soul I yeah, get rid of it. that's literally how I felt in it but I was also but then I was like mm, I do like Vincent Cassell and I was like no 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 get rid of it it's a well made good movie it is but yeah fucking hard to watch yeah. but difficult subject, subject matter. matter. Yeah. It's hard to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, and Brotherhood of the Wolf, they're mm-hmm. both in. Well, they've been both. They've been in, uh, I think, as a pair in a lot yeah. of movies. Um, okay, so the three of them. So what? Who are these people, and what are they doing in Shoot 'Em Up? Waiting for a bus. <laughs> All of them I mean, are waiting of. for a bus. <laughs> and yeah. Shoot 'Em yeah. Up. Yeah. What a great intro for uh, for characters. I love this because um, it's it just starts. Like we get a little uh, Clive Owen is sitting on a bench eating a carrot, mm-hmm. stirring his coffee. Uh, a waitress or a woman in yellow comes by uh, and pregnant, pregnant in pain. Yeah. Um, and he just silently. This is all happening just silently as he watches her go along. A car swerves around the corner and crashes. And then a guy with a gun gets out and starts to follow the woman. And that is our story. And Clive Owen decides he needs to get involved to save the woman. Yeah, reluctantly, yeah. right? Because that's the thing. He's like, fuck. This is I have to do something yes. because, you know, this woman's going to be threatened by this guy with a gun. So he has to stand up and actually this has ruined his night. This and is then, his <laughs> career in the mid aughts is sa- reluctantly saving pregnant women. Yeah. That's what he does. That's what Clive Owen does in the mid 2000s. Uh, there you go. And this was after children. <laughs> yeah, it what? was. Um, did, he ever, he, did he ever say why he's waiting for the bu- or where he's going? No, no, he has no. the point. It's they keep like... calling him a bum for because this is <laughs> he's going to have like a, a mysterious backstory, right? Mm-hmm. His name is Smith. That's all we, Mr. Smith. Mm -hmm. And uh, he does have a a backstory that comes out later. But my question is, why does he eat the carrot? I mean, this is like a huge thing in the movie. He is always chomping on a carrot. Because the dynamic is based on Bugs Bunny and Elmer Fudd. That's really the only reason. (laughs) (laughs) So that's why he cast Paul Giamatti. Yeah. Because he's your Elmer Fudd. Uh, Yeah. Oh, now it makes so much sense. Now it makes all the sense (laughs) in the world. I was assuming it was like a Bugs Bunny thing, but I'm like, wouldn't you go with Roadrunner? But okay. So the Bugs Bunny jokes, that was very strategic. Yep. Okay. Yep. Got it. But also, he's a crack shot. He needs his eyes to be good to see the shoe. So he eats carrots. I thought it was like, oh, because he's a he's a like an ace shooter. And so. we see his bunker that he lives in. That's like the only thing he can grow to eat. Like, that's yeah. the only food we see in his bunker when we get yeah. to that point. 
That's uh, he has that's like right, the yeah. hydroponic setup yeah. with growing yeah. carrots. Oh, carrots! Yeah. Lots of fiber. Um, Lots of fiber. Too that's much. Dangerous amount of fiber. Because <laughs> these are these are like big, literally carrots. cartoon carrots. Like yeah. they are yeah. gigantic. Like perfect for snowman noses. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so Paul Giamatti is running like a crew of assassins who are trying to. So I mean, I mean, I guess we just like this is what's going on, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. It's like Paul Giamatti is working for a uh, chef. Shadowy organization mm -hmm. that is trying to, oh, Jesus, okay. Tamerson, yeah, the gun manufacturer. <laughs> yes, please give us a complete rundown of why and what they're doing. <laughs> I mean, there's this a is all senator revealed who's as the against movie. Yes. gun control and he's dying of cancer, but nobody knows this. And so basically they're growing, uh, well, they're- Stem cells, they're growing stem cells. Stem cells basically. Yeah. by having all these women who are in a- a pregnancy ward that's constructed above a heavy metal club <laughs> yep. uh, birthing babies and Paul Giamatti's crew figures out that the only way we can make sure that this guy doesn't become the next president of the United States is we kill all the donor babies. And so they yeah, go not going to kill him. <laughs> right. Yeah. So Just the babies. They go after uh, this guy was on a lot of coke when he wrote this, right? <laughs> right? This is like, wow. <laughs> um, Stephen McHattie is also in this movie, mm -hmm. the great Canadian. He's kind of a cadaverous looking actor that you've seen yeah. in a bunch of stuff. Yeah. If you haven't seen Pontypool, mm. I recommend that one because that's almost like a one man show. He's a radio. That's a Canadian horror movie, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very few of those. So we got to celebrate him when we find him. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> But he was uh, the ma gun manufacturer. He was Hammersmith, yep. correct? Okay, yeah. there you go. The, right. the dogs yeah. that yeah. he yeah. was Hammerson, yeah. very attached to, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this movie's going to set us up like right away with an action sequence <laughs> in which Clive Owen is, you know, trying to save this woman mm -hmm. from, uh, well, there was a bit, even before, you're like, she's given birth and there's dudes coming in through windows and hopping in through the doors and doing all this stuff. And Clive Owen's turn around and... <laughs> Right? Yeah. Colin, Colin just described the next hour and a half. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For an hour and a half. Uh, so and we're, scene. So, so we're talking about stunt work or technique or like uh, what visceral impact. And that's what the whole movie's going to be for the hour and a half. I mean, are you glossing over the I fact mean, that he's shooting up while delivering a baby? Yeah. You, well, I would say are, within are the first, that, like, what, three minutes, he shoves a carrot through a guy's throat? Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, the out the back head, of his yeah. head. Like, yeah. that's the opening with scene. The yes. Better oh. eat your vegetables. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, sorry, did you just Terminator to us right now? <laughs> well, I think you need that kind of... Yeah, yeah, that would have been a good hit after, after, <laughs> after he said it, yeah. There should have been some, like, audio hit after he yeah. did it. That would have yeah. been good. Like, if, you know, if it was a Rambo movie. Right. right bringing home a whole bunch of body bags. Uh, there's also a scene, which I was trying to remember what year Drive Angry came out. But I think, I think this it was, was later. Nine. Yeah, well, didn't drive angry. I was gonna say later? this. I feel like this movie is like a spiritual cousin to Drive Angry, and that's why I'm into it. Like, <laughs> okay, but there's a scene, there's a sex scene that, that happens. That is almost in both exactly movies. like oh, Drive yeah. Angry. That's yeah. right. But Drive Angry ups the ante by one because Drive uh, Angry is 2011. 2011. Much so later. it saw a shoot 'em up and yep. decided to like we you know challenge those filmmakers they said, to a duel. What if shoot 'em up but a cult? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what Drive Angry said. So they made it for me, is what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> but in shoot 'em up. We have Clive Owen having sex with Monica Bellucci as dudes are coming in through the windows. And, yeah. like, of course, he is able to, like, shoot all of them. Mm -hmm. And this, of course, because they're attached, manages to, uh, you know, uh, light her spark. Mm -hmm. uh, in, <laughs> you get to see some Clive Owen ass, too. I saw some blurry... Somebody blurred something out. There was somewhere some in there. Blur, I saw yeah. some blurriness. Yeah. I'm like, ooh. I was actually slipped. surprised that uh, Monica Bellucci was still wearing her skirt during that entire scene mm -hmm. because I've seen her movies. Uh, and then, <laughs> yeah, she's got no problem with it. But Drive Angry had a scene where they upped the ante because Nicolas Cage was still wearing his sunglasses while screwing that one yeah. woman, right. and he was able to wasn't there a drink taser? whiskey at the same time? Yes, there was a there taser was. involved as well. Yeah, well, yeah, which was what sent her off. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You get, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Edge driving. I, I brought both of these movies, yeah. so clearly okay. this checks uh, boxes. <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, yeah, after uh, she gives birth, this woman, right, in in a, uh, in, yeah, because like it was a warehouse. It? Yep. Yeah. yeah. This was the mechanics fling where he gets on the grease and slides mm -hmm. through. There's a lot of sliding. A lot, a lot of sliding. Of, a lot of sliding, yeah. yeah. Whether like it, a penguin. 
Yeah, whether it be on uh, oil, urine, or semen at some point. Yeah. Like, there's mm-hmm. a lot of sliding in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Clive Owen's just an oily guy, like, by nature or something. It's his coat. Everybody wears big, black, leather trench coats. Mm-hmm. Dusters everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Like were they do. dusters? I don't know. This was he like... had a duster. I think that point where they're just like, I need fifty more men, and they show up and they're all wearing <laughs> they're the same leather jacket. It's like a uniform. It's great. Yeah. yeah. But that's that's the little details of this movie. Like right. they're taking all those elements from other action movies. It's like, well, all the henchmen, you you don't care, and they all look the same anyway. So they're basically the team. So now we're gonna uh, we're gonna dress them identically. I do like funny. the fourth wall breaking elements of this movie. Like when Paul Giamatti is like, I'm not your typical crime boss. I do the dirty work myself. That I love funny. that. Where he's like, dragging a yeah. body into the yeah. car. I'm like, yeah, I love that he's good. like, yeah, I just yeah. don't sit back and let my henchmen right? do. He's like, no, I'm down in it. Like I love yes. that. That is nice. He's mm-hmm. a good boss. Yeah. But isn't he? His whole thing is that he's uh, constantly getting calls from his wife on the phone. Mm-hmm. Like yep. so, mm-hmm. he's like a married guy with uh, mm-hmm. you know. But then but he's henpecked. Yeah, henpecked boss of uh, all these. Because uh, even yeah, even like major crime bosses, you know, they still got to deal with the same shit we do. Colin. Yeah, yeah that's what this They're people too. Is about right. Yeah. 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 We all got the same shit. Mm. We just I, some people kill people in the meantime. I do like that during this this when he's helping this woman give birth that he cuts the umbilical cord by just shooting it off. It's like, great. like it's like he's too feels, small to be shot. He feels more comfortable doing things with guns than with his own hands. Yeah. Like, like that's, yeah. I, if he can do it with a gun, he'll take that option but I, every I time. I appreciated like his effort. Like he's like seriously like at the base, like telling her to push. Like he was into yeah. it. He was really helping her deliver that baby. Yeah. Well, that's the whole it. thing of his character, right? <laughs> yeah. Is that he's supposedly this like stone cold killer or whatever. Well, the, about his backstory, which you'll have to fill us in on. But, you know, the fact that he's got like this baby, there's a humorous scene earlier on a bus where uh, because mom dies, she gets shot in the head. She mm-hmm. does not make it out of the uh, cacophony <laughs> of shooting. Was that the one that ended up with the big fuck you too sign on? The- yes. OK, you got to tell us about that. And Clive Owens, <laughs> uh, who is Clive Owens so character? They 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 escape out through this warehouse. They go onto a roof. This movie's just like endless warehouses. It yeah, seems like. I mean, but, um, and there's like. Something truck and tool is it's, it? Yeah, like Fa- Fa- Faulkner truck Faulkner and tooling and tool. like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, he shoots and like and like the the squad that like henchmen are behind the sign and shooting through the letters and he shoots it out so it says "fuck you," and then. Once Clive Owen jumps through the window with the baby, which is wild, uh, and then Paul Giamatti comes up on the roof and he <laughs> he shoots it out so it says "fuck you too," and I was like. <laughs> I feel like the first time I watched this movie, that was the moment I was like, all right, I'm sold. Like, yeah. Right, because we are watching a cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. Going, yeah. That's yeah. the tone of this movie. Yeah. And, you know, the Bugs right. Bunny references. Um, so who is Clive Owen? Why does he possess the supernatural ability to hit all of his targets from crazy like angles with both hands as he's jumping through things and sliding around on grease and. Well, isn't there a lot of speculation throughout the movie? Like, is he Black Ops? Is he yeah. Army? Is he this? This is true, because Paul Giamatti is slowly um, piecing everything together, right. following Clive Owen right. about him. Because uh, Paul Giamatti was a was an FBI profiler at one well, point. Well, yeah. Hold on. He corrected it, and he yeah. said, what did he say? Like, behavioral For- analyst? Behavioral forensics yeah. That, is what yeah, he yeah, did. Yeah. Yeah. Because the details matter. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 But it's, the, it's that great kind of relationship where you can tell Paul Giamatti, like, almost likes him like he respects him and he's like i gotta figure this guy he out likes the like, chase he yeah. does yeah yeah he's i very, love that dynamic he, he's kind of like one of those villains it's like i found my match exactly. like i found right. my equal it's you very, know like, yeah sherlock moriarty like they kind of love hate each other right yeah I, but it's also that batman and joker i can't exist without you like yeah. if i don't have you then i don't have a purpose <laughs> right yeah you know <laughs> so. yeah and he, that's, that's why batman never kills the joker because he wouldn't be batman if he didn't have the joker right? that's why he just locks him up because then he'll know to escape and they can continue the dance all over again Mm-hmm. So true. Read Batman and Philosophy. It's a great book. You'll learn <laughs> shit like that. You know? There you go. Um, but I mean, uh, uh, we get Clive Owen's backstory because Paul Giamatti is putting it all together. Um, what is what does he figure out? He figures out. He was like he the, sold the guns. That his, yeah, there were these British like MI five agents or whatever who started manufacturing guns or somehow came over to the United States. <laughs> right, he tracked his birth. He's just like one of those guys was fucking around, and had a kid, kid. Yeah. right? So he's tracking him down through like his lineage. Meanwhile, Paul Giamatti is solving like little mysteries throughout. He's like as he's tracking him, he's just picking out different things. Like he was there. Mm-hmm. And he was here. And so he's. he's but who uh, sold the gun that killed Clive Owen's wife and kid? There's he that. Did. Didn't 
Clive Owen Clive sold, Owen his, sold, own, sold, sold yeah. the guns yeah. and killed his own family. Yeah. Yeah. That was what they said in the interrogation scene. Yeah. Andrew is breaking his thumbs and his mm-hmm. fingers. He said, and then you found out the guns you sold killed your own wife and son. Yeah. <laughs> what a twist! Yeah. yeah. So he's a broken man. That's why he's on a bus stop at mm-hmm. the yes. beginning of the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got nothing left to lose, Colin. No. That's, that's right. right. Except he's got a certain set of skills. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's the role Clive Owen should have. He should be the Liam Neeson of now. <laughs> yeah. Instead of but Liam Neeson. But we love Liam Neeson. I know. But Liam Neeson is retiring. I hear the marksman might be the last one. So well, you know, but how many, how many of the movies. same movie does he need to make? You know, that's, he maybe is that's this fine. generation's Charles Bronson. He makes those he movies. Is. Those are Charles Bronson movies it's with so Liam It's so funny because he initially turned down playing James Bond because he didn't want to be an action star. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's... Uh, the oh, irony. Liam Neeson. Well, this, I mean, he gets to be an action star on his own accord now like yeah. according to his rules because if he was bond they'd be all like trying to control him as bond now he gets to do but he could have but his bond. movies are so much worse <laughs> his movies are so much worse yeah. than james bond movies but right? he's having fun. the commuter was fucking trash man like that what was, i kind of like that what was like good that what was the plain one fast something was uh, <laughs> you're the only one who's seen that I, I think oh, somebody dragged me to that movie but it wasn't too bad but yeah, i don't remember great. that one being bad either they were like you know you the watch gray, him and the you gray go, was like, bad you know what Oh, I tuned. love the great, but that, that's like a Liam different Neeson movie. movie. It's, gonna, gonna, it's, it's gotta well, come, right? Done? There's what, what three Taken movies, yeah. right? Yeah, there's yeah. three Takens. I'm yeah. All right, let's, all right after this, though, let's, let's give it a break before we bring Liam Neeson action oh, after shoot him up. We need a little break. We yeah. Non-stop. Yeah. Non-stop. No, that was that the Jodie Foster one? No, that was one with Sean Bean and... What was that? Oh, flight, flight plan. plan. Yes, yeah. nonstop. Plan. Yes, that night, was it. <laughs> nonstop yeah. was flight his plane one. Yes. Oh wow, that's an hidden memory. Flight plan. Yeah. I remember the commercials for that one. Watch that movie because they play a little trick with Sean Bean, which is actually pretty fun. But I think that's the only good thing about that movie. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, tell me how Monica Bellucci figures into this movie. (laughs) She is a a (laughs) lactating prostitute. So if you have that kink, you can. She specializes in baby fetish. Okay, but I wasn't sure because we first how this works, because we first meet her and she is servicing a client who is drinking uh, her breast milk. Yep. And then uh, I was From like, her breast. okay, so then I'm like, well, then she must have a, a child nearby or she recently would've. had a child yeah. or something like that, which I guess is later addressed that she lost it. But I'm yeah. like, how long ago? Like, yeah. how long I, I think this is just like her superpower is, is what you got to <laughs> take away from this movie. Yeah. Because if you, uh, if she's you, got bottles of the stuff all over the place. She, and yeah. Like, like yeah, yeah. Describe this room, Colin. You know it's... what, Sean, you don't get to call this out when you brought the baby. The baby. <laughs> I don't want to hear anything from just, you. when You brought want, the baby. Uh, like ex- describe the similar. It's just like a velvet room. She's in. Like, right. But you brought a whole movie that was baby fetish. <laughs> <laughs> this is one scene in a main. I'm not movie. putting it down. I'm just saying. No, I want to know what was happening in that flash frame as we're going through the whorehouse and Clive yeah. Owen is trying to find. That like, was a that, Doctor Who fetish, that right? That was a Doctor Who thing. But I didn't see. What was yeah. the Doctor Who part? It's, it's I like won't know. Dark, but. Oh, there's a character in Doctor Who that is literally just flesh stretched it's out on frame. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. That's what it that's was. That's a was. Doctor Who thing. Yeah. That's if what you, it looked like. If a you dude Google, got stretched out. If you yeah. Google Doctor Who moisturize me, Here, I'll, I'll Google it so you guys can see it. No. 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 I won't. And you can't make me. I've seen that episode. So have I. Never connected it to like. Yeah. Oh, there's people who want it to be stretched out as. Big flap of skin on a wall. But it looked like the guy from Hot Shots Part 2 who yeah. gets shot into the wall. It's like, that's a hell of a like gun. slither or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, what is that? That's exactly that's, what it that's is. That's what it was. Yeah, that's what that's it was. That's what it is. It's pretty close. It's the character. Yeah, it's a, it is. Her name is Cassandra or something skin. from Doctor Who. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. a wall of skin with a face on it. Yeah. You only see it for like a half second. But it's yeah. enough to be like, what, what the fuck? What, yeah. what right. was going on there? Right, we where's should that movie? Stop the movie and rewind. Yeah. What, um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, because she's a lactating uh, prostitute. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Clive Owen figures. Well, you know, I got to take this baby there. There's a nice scene. Which this with- makes sense. Like, it sure. this is a good move. In this part. world, yeah. makes sense. Yeah, yeah makes because sense. I mean, he doesn't know what to do. He's on a bus right. and he sees another woman putting a little uh, hat on their baby. <laughs> this was, I loved that. So scene. heartwarming. This is like the Terminator learning to love. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, that was so cute. <laughs> so he's like, I'm gonna put my dirty sock on. He the kid's takes head. his sock. But off. I love that the mom was like. Good job. And yeah. she like laughed and she's like, You're doing she good. She's like, You're trying. Yeah, yeah. she was. Yeah. I'm like, good That was mom. really cute. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I fun. know. Little moments like that. Right. Little loving moments like yeah. that. Right. Shoot them up or what we're here for. <laughs> right. be like, How in the hell did Paul Giamatti find this character now? There's a city. We, do we know where this was filmed or where this takes place? 
I don't know where it was filmed, and I looked at the Wikipedia, and it didn't say where it takes place. It looks some parts look like LA, some parts look like Canada. Mm. So I'll bet it's Canada. Yeah, oh, okay. I was like, it could be Detroit for all yeah. we know, or because yeah. we don't know, and they didn't spend any money on like establishing the city. Right, guessing yeah. Canada. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the uh, he is able to track them down because he issues an order, an edict, for his men to go out and find every lactating prostitute or mammary what. Every memory on tap. Yeah. Every yes. memory on tap, <laughs> which you apparently look up in a directory, and eventually that leads you to Monica Bellucci. <laughs> They're bad guys. They have all this because when you need to know it, it's there. They're doing their research. They have a database, Colin. Yeah. I think that's so. what the black I, yeah. market is, right? Yep. <laughs> Everybody yeah. knows everybody on the black the dark market. Dark web. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's definitely a dark web <laughs> shit. <laughs> sex worker. Yeah. <laughs> so, do, does the mob have an administrative assistant? God, I hope so. Like, in. Like, can I have that job? Yeah, like, hell be yeah, an administrative yeah. assistant to the to the mob. Yeah, I mean they have well, to, right? Yeah, they have to. The have you seen John Wick? There's like a whole room full of people that are. That's like, what I instantly thought of. Like, you know, if someone needs like a new stapler, they come to me, and the mob is like, "Oh, can you find a lactating prostitute?" Yeah, like, all right, I'm on yeah. it. Yeah, like, is that me? <laughs> no, you're like. Yeah. <laughs> It's a good one the girl month. in the chair for the mob is what yeah. you Yeah. Holly, yeah. I feel like as long as you don't ask any questions, they won't care. So, right? I mean, as long as no, you no, just no. be like, yeah, sure. You're right? the one who knows everything they do. Yeah. And they can trust you with it. So, she knows all the weird shit. Right. Like, yeah. Oh, you guys are neat. Yeah, because that's neighborhood connect. Again. Because yeah. that's part of my job. Yeah. yeah. I know everyone's shit. So yeah. She, and, but she gives all the bad guys shit because she, she's like the, the president's secretary from West Wing. She's just like, she, she's an institution. She's been there forever. She knows all where all the bodies are buried. Like, yeah. that's Holly's role. Yeah, I've never seen that, but I like it. Should, oh, we, be, should, yeah. we, be yeah. Con- yeah. should we be copywriting this idea? Yes, I think so. Okay. Yes, uh, twenty twenty one Saturday night. Secretary to the mob. Like, can we just call it that? Mob like, secretary. Like it's a sequel to Married to the Mob yeah, or the Mob Doctor <laughs> as uh, the Mob Secretary. What, but wasn't like Holly that, and the Mob it... copyright twenty twenty one Saturday Night Freak Show? Yes. Wasn't Hotel Artemis that movie? No one saw kind of that. I think so. It was like a. Was it? it was like a hospital for. Assassins. Yeah, well, I thought Assassins it was like the, shit. Yeah. the Continental from John Wick that yes, just made yes. like a whole movie yeah, about Yeah, exactly. That. And no yeah. one went to see it. Yeah. No one. Yeah. And I remember seeing trailers and being like, who the fuck is this for? Like, why, are you, Foster fans. why are you shitting on my movie? But, <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, Charlie Day was in it, and that was the biggest draw for me. I was like, all oh, right. Charlie Day. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, what happens next in the plot? The uh, Clive Owen shows up to rescue. Clive uh, shoots someone. Yeah, That's, there's shootouts yeah, in, in right. bathrooms. Right? The bathroom or, shootout, yeah. Yeah, Gross. where we have uh, uh, guns that are submerged in a, in a dirty toilet, yep. and then he has, he has to, to dry, dry them out in the dryer. Piece the by dryer. piece in the hand dryer. I like this, because I like when he shoots it, and he's just like, it does, it doesn't fire. And so he's like, oh, I have to fight this guy off until I can dry the bullet, dry Love the it. hammer on it, <laughs> yeah. and then I can shoot yeah. it. Yeah. Like, it's just little stuff like that, yeah. and while yeah. everything keeps going mm-hmm. while he's doing this stuff, which is fun. It yeah. is fun. Well, I mean, it's done at a rhythm that's like, you know... Uh, um, I don't know. I mean, cranked up to eleven, right? I mean, yes. yeah, this, oh, yeah. it does yeah. still have its like peaks and valleys and peaks and valleys, yes. but it's always ramping you up and then you know coming back down. Like, okay, just a yeah. In this scene, you're not going to shoot anybody, but you're going to spank a grown woman. Like things like that happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To so be we that, do get our <laughs> that woman. Oh God, I didn't think about that. That, that woman. I what, what what a you lucky didn't think extra. about that. <laughs> Holly auditions for this. Like, oh, I'm going to be in a Clive Owen movie. It's like, yeah. ma'am, here is your role for the day. Yeah, you uh, Clive Owen's going to come up. Spank you, and this is your scene. And then Holly just dies. Yeah. That's a fucking lottery yeah. right there. Yeah. I, I need like a full like documentary in Ma'am, that Ma'am, you're supposed to be in distress when yeah. Mr. Owen is spanking you. You're not supposed to be enjoying it. I'm surprised we didn't invite her on the Saturday Night Freak Show to get her take. Uh, right. uh, but question about that scene, because maybe I wasn't clear. Was he doing that as a distraction? Yes. or it's just, Yes, because okay. he said, I'll make a distraction. Yeah. Okay. And yes. he saw an like, opportunity. And took is this it. like he's, you know, I got to go no, save this woman let's from. Let's live uh, in the world where Colin didn't see that. And he thinks that. <laughs> He's just spanking a woman yeah. because she's spanking her kid. Yeah, right. because it I mean, like, he saved a like does, pregnant woman, then he's going to save this kid does, from a spanking. It does fit because you know we haven't really gone over it yet. But one of like the continuing plots of this movie is he's constantly saying, "You know what I hate?" Yeah, yeah. And he's like, "I hate fucking drivers that don't use their blinkers." And he's constantly like correcting people. He right. has so a moral code. code. It's in yeah. character for him to actually just stop and be like, "Hold on, pause the movie. I need to spank this woman to teach her a lesson." Yeah, and like it does. It does work. It does work. But it just works with the distraction. This is all because he's like on right. Like yeah. prior to the movie, he was just kind of hanging out in this whatever blasted out warehouse. 
where he uh, uses a Rube Goldberg device involving a rat. I love this. I that was like, this is fucking awesome. Right? Yeah, yeah, I was like, that's what? fantastic. Yeah. He, he pulls a brick out of the wall and there's like a cage with a rat in it. He grabs the rat, puts the brick back, pulls another brick out, puts the rat in. The rat goes through this Rube Goldberg contraption and unlocks the door. Yeah. And there's a carrot involved in that contraption yeah. too. Yeah. And and I, I saw that and I was like, what? Genius. Why is this in this movie? But then it does kind of pay off later a little bit. Genius. But And then you see he has this crazy pulley system in his bunker as well with like, you know, pliers and shit clipped to the ends and he mm-hmm. pulls them and different things happen. And But that pays up at the, uh, at the end, too. Yeah. Like this is just like part of his... His character, right? Because right. he ends up bringing a bunch of booby traps later on right. to like ensnare all the bad guys, which is just pulling cords that... Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think the shootout sequence in his bunker might be my favorite in the movie, though. I, I love him like sliding down the rolling belt mm-hmm. and then flipping around the bottom of it and shooting underneath it. Mm-hmm. And then I love the slide under the table and then the way the camera rotates when he pushes the table up and yeah. shoots over it. That like kind of full 180 rotation with the table I yes. really really like mm-hmm. yeah there's a lot of I mean so I mean I guess we're saying there's a lot of stunt work in this movie um I don't know that anything kind of calls attention to itself as like a great feat of human um you know why why I thought about this too there is not really any of that like you were gonna say a great feat of human like um uh, like being able to, uh, uh, yeah, do like a stunt. compared to like the raid or something right. where you're it's watching the, these guys from a distance yes. doing this, like Jesus it's Christ. The editing, the editing has cut out um, any chance of doing that because I think this movie is a success the way it is because of the quick editing. Because yeah. none of these stunts are seen in a long version. Like, they are all cut down to when he's sliding under the stalls, like that's like five cuts right there. When he's sliding across the roller um, thing, that's like. That's like five cuts. One of him jumping on. There's one, another shot of him like sliding midway. Another shot of him coming off. Never done in one take. I but feel like that impressive. was of the time. I think. So. I feel I think like this is, this is how action movies were in the mid aughts. Like I Frank so. is the same way, uh, right? Well, and I think is, that's you know, where they were going. It's an extension of like the Michael Bay. You know, right. What was yeah. the, the famously Michael Bay like never had a shot that lasted more than like what was it three yeah, seconds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something yeah, like that. Something insane it was, like you know, that. Uh, you know, like we're gonna we're gonna make it really kinetic by just having these quick. It just keeps going. The camera's mm-hmm. always moving. Yeah. This is a movie that does that the entire way through. Right. Yeah. But my question is, I guess, in the effect of these kind of things, like if you see a movie, because I mean, like from a production standpoint, all the stuff we're saying is like it's five edits. You're saying I'm like that's five different camera shots. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know that they had to do to take you know this one action. They had to set all this up, do it like five times, or at least see it from five different angles, and we're going to cut between it. Yeah. But does it um, does it take away, like, are you able to absorb the information to actually remember detail by detail what happened, or it's more about just the impact when you're watching it? It's like, we're hitting you with so much, it, it feels like it's really exciting, or... Does your brain just kind of go like, okay, I'm seeing a bunch of shit happen. And I know that like, okay, that, you know, the guy went around and did the thing. But like later when you're thinking back, you're like, so what actually happened there? I feel like this movie is easier to follow than like a Transformers movie. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would agree. I I think because it's so focused on one person Mm -hmm. and one person's actions, it's pretty easy to follow. Mm -hmm. But like, I think anything 2007 onward a lot more difficult to follow. Like those Transformers those movies, Liam it Neeson is just a movies. mess of shit, you know? <laughs> um, I and never, nobody in right. And Ron John Wick does a pretty good, uh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I never lost like the geography of where I was right, watching right, this movie, yeah. which is a problem you can get. When, yeah. Like you said, well, you get you, that in Transformers. Oh, right. When you just it is don't just know. metal and a mess <laughs> and yeah. dirt and sand. But you don't and know where it. your character is at any moment. Like where you don't know where they started, where they're at, what's going on. I was able to like track this movie. Mm-hmm. I was able to track, like yeah. you said, I think it helps that we're with one person. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's clear enough. There's some moments where I'm just like, eh. but other than that, I think mostly it pulls it off. Mm-hmm. Cause I was able to track him through the movie. Mm-hmm. So I think they did good. Mm-hmm. I think like, yeah, I think you're, you're right. Chono. The editing is where like that all really comes together. Mm-hmm. Like, especially the table scene, because that could have yes. looked really bad. Yeah. And it was very smooth. I thought and yes. it in its movement. Yeah. Well, it's also doing a lot of like it, it does camera angles for maximum cool effect. Cause there's a lot of shots of those kind of, you know, 
Clive Owen driving in a car, pointing the gun out, and the camera's like at the end of the gun barrel, yeah. looking back at him as he's like, yep. you know, driving. <laughs> but, yes. I mean, it's all shot for like maximum cool. Yes. You know? Yeah. Every shot could be a poster at this point. It's yeah. like Clive Owen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I... And like the, I mean, this is jumping around a little bit, but the carousel scene at the at the beginning when like he puts the baby on the carousel to like abandon it, and Holly's like, "Just take it to a fire station." Yeah, like you know, yeah, um, they don't ask questions. Yeah, and uh, that the scene where he like shoots it with the handgun to get it spinning around was actually done on MythBusters. Oh, was so, it? So yeah, they did it work. They did it with a handgun, and it wasn't enough force, so they just kept making the gun bigger until they got to like a <laughs> rifle, I think. And a rifle was able to make it like spin slowly. So you can make it spin, but not as fast as he made yeah. it spin. See, so. stuff like that. Like, I forgot about that. And I think about it and I'm like, oh, that gives me joy. Cause yeah. It's just yeah. a little baby sitting on a little, little carousel thing. Yeah, and he's yeah. just shooting it to get it going. And yeah. it's, well, it's because Paul Giamatti is sitting there with a sniper rifle from the car. Oh, yeah, he's like going to shoot. Yeah. The- hey, somebody left a baby. <laughs> Worst actress <laughs> we've seen in a while. Oh, but I thought that purposeful. line is purposeful. Yeah, that purposeful. Was, that was spectacular. So good. <laughs> she gets shot. It's like, oh. Yeah. So good. They knew They knew what they were doing. Right. Yeah. Oh, no. I mean, it's clearly like, you know, I mean, this is a calculated yes. thing. But that's why I wonder is like the director hasn't worked again because he's like, that was my magnum opus. Man. I think I mean, that this like, was his passion project. So yeah. I think like, right I think so. he's yeah. like, I peaked. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I got Clive Owen and Paul Giamatti in my dream project. We, you know, right. where do I go from here? And then know? nobody watched it because they're like, we saw Crank the Year. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, yeah. like, we're tired. Well, we can't do this. You contributed, I guess, a movie yeah. to the, you know. Yeah. This movie, yeah, has been forgotten to the sands of time. Like, no one, re- like, everyone remembers seeing the ads for this movie, but that is it. Like, like I, oh, yeah, I never saw that movie. Yeah. And, and especially, like, it hit that tail end of, like, r- like, Rental stores were going out of business mm-hmm. right at this time, so it was a really <laughs> no this, one's buying that on Blu-ray. Right, right. This, but this could have been a huge rental movie. Like, had they been sustainable at this I, time? I you know? seriously just wonder if casting would have changed its fortunes. But I mean, does anybody remember? Well, I don't know. But Clive Owen was hot as fuck at this time. I, like, yeah, this is his was, peak of his I'm career. I'm just saying, like, I, you know, for its legacy, like, you know, would it have done better <laughs> than? You know, now that we can say that, like, mm-hmm. well, clearly Clive Owen didn't help its fortunes. But I do, mean, would saying he's have, a good actor is, you know, but. But would anyone have thought that of Keanu with John Wick? You know what I'm saying? Like, if you would have been like, yeah, Keanu Reeves is going to lead this fucking assassin trilogy. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, cause on paper, that doesn't down, sound like it should work either. You right know? And it time. does. But if yeah. Keanu's was kind of yeah. like. He was doing knock knock. Knock knock for yeah. Yeah, Eli Roth yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Right. And it was like John Wick came around and like, okay, yeah. now Keanu Reeves, now we got Matrix, Matrix, Matrix Four. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, well, in if that's what John Wick did, then fuck you, John Wick. <laughs> but I don't have to watch it, so it's okay. Yeah. yeah. We should talk about the plane scene and the subsequent <laughs> scene after it. Right. Where he confronts the. I was just say uh, you have to describe these more because I'm like, there's so many scenes in this movie, like the plane scene. <laughs> well, he he, he confronts uh, uh, Mr. Smith gets an audience with the oh, yeah. senator, right? Yep. Oh. <laughs> Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Clive Owens on a plane with the senator and takes him hostage, takes him to the bottom of the plane, strings him up so that the hatch can't be opened without pulling this guy's like head into the roof, which is delightful. It's pretty funny. Shoots him, therefore ending the chase. Well, for- well but he, we, we think he's the good guy at this point, the yeah. victim. But it turns out he's actually in cahoots with. Yeah. The, mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, right. he's in cahoots with Hammerson and with Paul Giamatti's character yeah. to like bre- breed bone marrow for him, basically. Right. Um, and so Clive Owen Weird, strings him up. Right? Yeah, I was yeah. actually trying to work that out. I'm like, well, why are they killing all these guys then? If he's like, you know, I want the, whatever. Yeah, or all yeah. the yeah. killing all the babies. But okay. <laughs> um, Clive Owen strings him up so that the hatch can't be open. Shoots him, therefore ending. He thinks ending the the chase for the for the child of Monica Bellucci. He. Dives out of the plane and all the henchmen come after him and we get a glorious gun foo like wall and free fall. Yes. And James Bond eat your fucking heart out, man. Mm -hmm. Like I I want to see Tony Stark me eat your heart out too or something like that. Yeah. (laughs) But but this got me this scene, because it is a gun foo scene set in, you know, dudes falling out of the sky. Um, it brought up many physics questions for me because I'm sure. like, how does a bullet work? Like, I'm going back to that at this point. I'm like, <laughs> if you're falling from a plane and you shoot down, 
Do you catch up with the? Do you catch up with your yeah. bullet at some point? Yeah. Was the Sun Mythbusters? I don't. I don't. This should have been a Mythbusters. <laughs> also, the, the force of like everything coming up and you're shooting down. I'm very curious. Well, especially right. because like I mean I've never been skydiving, but you always see those videos of people they're able to like meet up with each other in the air. Yeah. So like we know that's possible, but yeah. like beyond that, I don't know what's fucking possible. Like yeah. I, I feel like you would have to catch up with your bullet eventually, right? I think so. Because like it can't well, but continuously. Gravity is still pulling it down. That's the thing. Yeah. But like, it's lighter it's than you are. Or whatever. Yeah. Right. Well, it'll, it'll, well, it'll eventually and, stop the yeah. force going forward and yeah. just have to yeah. fall. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it's like it had. Let that... me break up my my chalkboard and we'll. <laughs> Colin's gonna figure it out right now. Morning. And if you have a machine gun, do you catch up with all those bullets? Yeah. <laughs> are you just getting hit with bullets as you're going down? I loved him using one of the people as a human shield. So not only were they like getting shot, but their parachute was also getting shot. Right. So like they're completely fucked. Opened it up into the dude. Yes. It's yeah, mm-hmm. but there, I don't think anybody actually jumped out of a plane in that scene, right? No, all, like, no not at all. Yeah, so it was all CGI. It, they were all they did those like simulators where they yeah. like it's yeah. like a, a big fan, fan. yeah, yeah, yeah. and then they did green screen in behind. But it's it, okay. Yeah. It, like, yeah, it, 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 it works it, it, well. It fits, yeah, it fits it works the well. tone of the movie. I yes. suppose that's where you know it's not crazy. Yeah. Tom Cruise actually jumping out of fucking. But how would you like, even shoot something like that? How would you shoot an entire gun? Christopher gun Nolan would figure it out. Christopher Nolan would sky. do it. And Tom Cruise, <laughs> <laughs> they'd figure it out. Christopher Nolan would do it. <laughs> they would. Crazy fuckers. Um, <laughs> I like that at one point we actually see the robot baby that they use yeah. throughout the movie. <laughs> I, I love the fourth wall breaking of this oh, movie. Oh, that's fantastic. That, yeah. that whole part was pretty good because, again, we get another car chase with Clive Owen. Because there's every kind of chase in this Every movie. kind of chase in this yep. movie. And eventually his car gets flipped over. He's got the baby with him in the seat. He flips the car over, um, flips it back right up and knows the baby isn't there. And so it's in the middle of the street. And now we're in the middle of uh, like a game of chicken. Like who's going to get to the baby first? We've already seen Clive Owen pick up a gun and start shooting people. So they're racing for it. He picks the gun up off the road as right. he drives. Right. Yeah. As yep. he's driving. So he's going to do it with the baby now. Yeah. Um, and then Paul Giamatti is also there. Um, but Clive Owen doesn't get there. He loses and the baby gets run over. Mm-hmm. It's a robot baby. <laughs> which is great which was just the weirdest thing because oh, uh, yeah another yeah. little addition it is the yeah. baby that we've been seeing throughout the movie that's the yes. robot baby yeah. head and Paul Giamatti's like what the fuck is that <laughs> that's <laughs> sad <laughs> dog. like that's great he's like you son of a bitch how could you do that after everything that's happened robot baby I love that the way they end the chicken fight though is that he shoots out his windshield takes off his seatbelt hits them head on and flies into oh their God. van yeah. and then shoots them all dead yeah. like one I fucking love it. Yes. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, I don't think... He's always three steps ahead. Yeah, and I don't think... Has he been hit by a bullet yet at this point? Only in the skydiving scene. There's the only time oh, he Oh, yeah, hit, he did. The skydiving scene is the first yeah. time he got hit with a yeah. bullet. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Well, this all culminates, if I am remember, remembering <laughs> all the sequence of this... Happens. Yeah, <laughs> uh, at the gun factory at the... Not Hammersmith. What was it? Hammerson. Hammerson fa- uh, factory. Um, mm-hmm. and he's and- got all the pulley guns. Yeah, and he's blasting the living shit out of everybody. Yeah. The carrot gun too, where he sticks a carrot in the in the trigger part. I don't know, gun. Well, because they torture, <laughs> they capture him at some point, right? He like oh, yeah. passes yeah. out yeah. from. I think after he lands mm-hmm. from the skydiving thing, and then yep. he's taken. You know, because that always happens in these movies. That's a prerequisite: is the bad guys get him and then you know torture them. Which right. I'm like, why aren't they just killing him? But only he knows where Monica Bellucci and the baby yes. right. are. Right, which he's put her. In a tank in the middle of a, a museum. Yeah, <laughs> this <laughs> is where it. I know you're going to be safe in this World War II tank. Um, so they break his fingers uh, one by know. one. Yep. Yeah, I really wanted him to hold up his hand and have them all bent to the side. Yeah, like, that's how I was hoping. He just like ah! <laughs> they were all just sideways. We know for sure it was one thumb and two middle fingers. That's what we saw. At least, yes. So. At and least then, those. Yes. I thought they got his trigger fingers, too. Wasn't that like part of the deal? There was a little bit of a, a, jump. a montage time lapse yeah. a little bit. Yeah. So I think they got all his fingers. And then yeah. they decided to go for the scalpel. Yeah. Oh, to the eye, which mm-hmm. uh, yes. mercifully we don't get to see. It doesn't happen in this movie. But the idea being that now your uh, hero, who's a gunsmith uh, fighter, can't actually shoot a gun. Which is right? hilarious. Which can't oh shoot a gun. God. And possibly oh one of the God. best payoffs to this. A little bit later in the movie, because we're coming down to the end of it, and <laughs> Giamatti has been, how to describe this, uh, Clive Owen, all his fingers are broken, but he's still got a gun, and he takes all the bullets out, he puts them in his hand, he lines them up in his hand, and then he puts it in the fire so that 
they'll shoot Paul Giamatti because he can't do it with a gun. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'm going to yeah. stick my hand in the fire. They'll heat up. They'll shoot Paul Giamatti all over. Yeah. And then I will have beaten the bad guy. And it works. I mean, everything works in this movie. It's yeah. fucking yeah. shoot him up. But he shoots him. <laughs> so, but Paul Giamatti's not dead quite yet. And they got to have that one final showdown. But they're both injured. But neither one of them but can, neither one can lift up their gun. they're, gun. like, struggling so hard to just lift their guns and, when you and the like most pathetic realize, shoot off. It is. When you realize what's happening, <laughs> it's, it's so, so funny. Because after all this movie, after an hour and a half of just balls-to-the-wall action, the final thing between two guys is they just got to stand five feet from each other and shoot each other, and they can't lift their guns. And it's just going so slow. Oh, it's hilarious. It's I, so funny. I love this juxtaposition, juxtaposition, too, of, like, this clear, like, obvious action star in Clive Owen, and then, like, Paul Giamatti, who's, like, this schlubby villain guy, but they're both, like, the playing field has been leveled yeah, between yeah, them, too, of, like, they're both can barely fucking raise their weapons. And weapon. I think you're doing that circle shot shot yeah. around them like that you see as they're both ah! how I like I can't imagine them keeping a straight face while filming this. I know right <laughs> right they have to be going I can't believe I but get to do you this you wouldn't call this movie a comedy right I Even think though it's I, like yeah. a, I think it's an action it's an action movie comedy. but it's fucking yeah. hilarious yeah. this is like a I mean because I like the genre of the deadpan comedy is this a deadpan comedy oh for sure think of all the one liners Clive yeah. Owen says looking right into the yeah. camera yeah. you know yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, man. so we're saying it's a comedy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, so. there's yeah. no way you watch this and not laugh. <laughs> yeah. Like oh, purposely funny. meant to make you laugh. Yeah. Okay. Um we don't want to leave you in suspense. Clive Owen does survive. He wins. He does. He, does. And the he dog shoots goes with him. He the shoots Paul Giamatti's heart out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He so there's a giant hole in him. <laughs> which Sean, I was with you. I would have been totally okay with Paul Giamatti living through this movie. Like, right. I would have been, been okay totally with, fine it. with it. Where he just like comes back to life and he just does his Paul Giamatti laugh and that's yeah. the last we see of him. Right. But there you go. Yeah. We the had dog, our fun with the Paul dog Giamatti. goes with Clive Owen. They get on the bus mm-hmm. to wherever. Yep. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> and the movie ends with uh, Kickstart My Heart by Motley Crue, of course, which seems like that would be a better choice for the Crank soundtrack. Maybe it was. I'm pretty sure it was in there. <laughs> it had to be, sure right? It, it had to be. That's on the nose. That movie, that movie is on the nose, the movie, so I'm sure yeah. it's in there. Um, I mean, that, oh, that guitar riff. Never, ooh, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The and soundtrack then, is great. It's wall fun. to wall in this yeah. movie. It's fun. It's fun. Crank is only called Crank because speed was already taken. I'm sure. <laughs> We're not talking about crank, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, well. Woo! Any- <laughs> are you tired? I'm tired. Are yeah. you exhausted just from talking about yeah. this movie? Uh, okay, so um, we're going to tell you whether or not we like the movie personally. But first of all, we're going to go around the table. Or no, we're going to uh, summon our mailman, and he's going to uh, bring us our mail. His name's Igor. Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. My thank you, Igor. Thanks. Oh, he's got a carrot. <laughs> Does, Does he Igor have a little like hydroponic carrot set up too? Uh, keep, what does he put in there to make him grow? Or a little wonder. rat. Unlocking he's definitely got rats. For the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think he's got rats yeah. in him that do a system to keep his body moving. <laughs> to tell yeah. you the yeah. truth, inside is a rat. Yeah, there's still yeah, on a wheel keeping inside. him going. <laughs> Guarantee it. They're running around in the brain. Is that yeah. a mouse? That's a mice, right? They're yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Looks like the Actually hamster. F- going, a hamster. Yeah. Looks like the hamster fell off the wheel. <laughs> um, well, we should let uh, folks know how they can get a hold of us. So all you got to do is follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, MF Man, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. Uh, sir. Hopefully we're putting carrots on the wall. We are putting someone on the wall for this movie. It's not the carrots, unfortunately. It. It's uh, the actor Julian Richings, who uh, oh. played uh, 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 Paul Giamatti's character, who's named Hertz, mm-hmm. uh, his driver. Who oh, we all recognized yeah. when we were watching the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was also the janitor in, in Urban, Urban Legend. Legend. Uh-huh. Yep. And he was Lore M in Man of Steel, one of the Kryptonians oh. at the beginning oh, of the movie. Sure. Well, you know, all right. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Yeah. And Death and Supernatural. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, which we have. Yeah, I was going to say, has, has MF Matt ever just put one on there just to fuck with us? She's like, this person is also on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Next week's gonna be like MF Matt is on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
mean, yeah. I mean, it's his wall. So. He gets. He, he's got a little picture in the corner, and it just says. Um, uh, moderated by. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Mr. Richings, uh, your uh, certificate is in the mail. Uh, about tonight's movie, Shoot 'em Up, Ed Snyder writes in and says, I cannot wait to hear you guys talk about this one. It's quite the underrated gem. I'm actually covering this in July with my best friend on our show, the Film Effect Podcast. I guess great podcast. Think alike. <laughs> Shoot 'em Up is definitely an overlooked masterpiece in my book. Uh, it's the one with Clive Owen and a carrot. What more do you need? Mm. Paul G. I'm mm-hmm. I'm glad other people are just not like what movie? Yeah, you know, yeah. like yeah. it's nice to be like, yeah, I know what that movie is. Well, Robin Lineman Silverberg writes in and says, "Well, if we're branching off into more recent action movies, might I suggest Guns Akimbo? It's fun but pretty uh, yeah. out there. After, uh, yeah. yeah, after watching those, I'll I'll give that a shot. That it's would be the one with uh, Danny Radcliffe. Danny Radcliffe. Yeah, Harry it's on, Potter. It's on himself. my list. Yeah, I kind of want to watch that too. That movie's nuts." <laughs> <laughs> right. Michael Whitaker writes in and says, this movie has no business being as good as it is. It does what a Punisher movie should do and somehow yeah. gets away with it. I'm also pretty sure Paul Giamatti and Clive Owen's dynamic was based off Bugs Bunny and Albert Fudd. This was the last movie I rented from Blockbuster Aww. before it went out of business. <laughs> and I still have it to this day. <laughs> Of you know, last time, right? I'm pretty That's sure amazing. I still have uh seven and a Zoolander DVDs still that, in the blockbuster that is box. Like, that is like the perfect time capsule of the yeah. end of that era. Yeah, just couldn't return them. Uh, last week we watched a movie called The Others. Uh, Travis Legler writes in and says, Man, hearing you guys together in the same room has got to be one of the best signs of returning to normal from COVID that I've gotten this year. Aww. Thank you. Aww, thanks. That's so Thank sweet. you. We're back. I- we're, we're uh, very high energy all the time now. Because, <laughs> <That's true. yeah. laughs> I'm sure we'll level out eventually, but you know. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Steve Carney writes in and says, it might be blasphemy to say, but I think The Others is a much better film than The Sixth Sense. Yes, The Sixth Sense did it first, but The Others did it better. Never have I seen so much fog and atmosphere to spare in a movie. Mm-hmm. Nicole Kidman's such a good actress. The Others is near the top of my favorite films list and the music especially the opening credits. So innocent and sad. I'm reading this wrong, but I'm sorry. Uh, right, finally, Shatner, calm down. Says, if you like the others, can I recommend Marrowbone? Oh, oh, I've never heard. Well, of now this. I'm going to check it yeah, out. Yeah, now I'm going to check it out. I will say, I think when it comes to movies, I'd rather rewatch. I think I would go the others before the sixth sense in a rewatch. Mm. The Sixth Sense is a really good movie. It when is. you go back and watch it's it, really it's like movie. it just you know. like it was such a cultural phenomenon for so long. I think we all got burnt out on it. Is the problem? You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it was, it permeated everything for so long. I know because I was like the uh, the alternative guy back then. I was like, you know, there's this movie Stir of Echoes. Yeah, exactly. Came out exactly. And, you know, like, I like that yeah. one better. But mm-hmm. going back, it's like oh, the Sixth Sense really is a good movie. <laughs> uh, Grant, uh, sorry, uh, Wes Craven's New Nightmare was the movie we did before that. Grant pa- Grant Parrish said. Uh, about that the acropolis dream tunnels are the american version of the subspace dream routes we see in ramona flowers use in scott pilgrim you can't use rollerblades in the acropolis though damn frackers damn i choose to forget everything i know about scott pilgrim so i'll take your word for it for that movie colin and i are in solidarity i I, I do not like that movie good good i do not like that movie well my pick's coming up i know it has like its defenders but good grief uh arty 64 109 says this is my favorite sequel out of all the movies any chance you guys would ever review wes craven's deadly friend the ending scared me to death when i was a kid don't tell us about the ending and well, now is I'm that, interested. Well, yeah. is that the one where she's a robot? Yeah, the basketball. Yeah, um, that's on the list. And she takes off. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ever well, since you I said that, I'm like, that's now. on the list. <laughs> right. I, I almost brought that last year. Like it's it, yeah. it'll it'll come at some point. Well, Matthew Ola says I'm surprised you guys haven't covered Shocker yet. It's it's always been on the list. It's I've just never list, been yeah. like oh, I want to watch Shocker. Again, I have, but it's been the thing. We it seems like we're always doing West Craven yeah, or does. West Craven adjacent movies. It yeah, does. he either we've, produced something yeah. we did. We've been on a streak of like for like, like three adjacent. years now. Yeah. 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 yeah, but he's you know he's a big influence. He yeah. did a lot. Yeah, yeah. and we did, did uh, stuff my to soul to movies. take, we which did. I think on that episode we said there's a lot of thematic similarities to Shocker, so that's why we need a little bit of time. Right, that was Shocker. Shockingly unwatchable. Like just you saying my soul to take t- took me back. You gotta go back and listen Ooh, to that episode. Oh my god! Uh, wow. So, uh, um, and Peter Gett wrote Burn in stuff. 
birds. That's right. Birds. The, the oh, California, yeah, the bird California, stuff. California condor. Yeah. Right. Uh, and Peter Gatt uh, wrote in and said, I rewatched Wes Craven's New Nightmare over the weekend. It wasn't as good as I remembered it, maybe, or I just wasn't in the right frame of mind, but I did have fun watching it. Okay. That's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, everybody, for thank writing you. in. Uh, we hope you will again. And now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie. And that was Shoot 'em Up, starting with Colin. Are we going to go like, should I felt like I should be like, Holly, what do you think? I know. I think like, we should do it in like, let's, what, if, eyes well, on actually, no, last. I, yeah, I would be first. You would be first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, but yeah. <laughs> okay. We just got to like move seats around. So Colin's not going Next first. Next week, you and, would be first. You come after me. Then Holly. Hey, oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So hey, Colin. Uh, shoot him up. Uh, what did you think? Because we're live. We're doing it live. <laughs> we're doing it live. Fuck it. We're doing it live. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you think? I wasn't all that impressed with shoot him up. I uh, could tell. You were very <laughs> quiet during this movie. Well, uh, I had seen it before, but yeah. it, it's, um, I'm not saying that I, I, I I'm it's not okay. saying I wouldn't it's recommend okay, it. Colin. It's yeah, okay. but I mean, I might because it, I guess it comes off. It's a movie of technique to me. Right. Uh, how a filmmaker is going to deliver a nonstop action uh, movie more than it is about, you know, what's actually going on. Because I think when, uh, you know, when I think maybe it was Sean, what you were talking about, like, you know, I'm wondering about like, what, you know, how the uh, bullets are, you know, <laughs> the physics. In, yeah, the physics. And I'm like, oh, that never even occurred to me because I'm watching how the filmmaker is like shooting all this stuff. So it could be I have like this, the, you know, put me into a layer of remove. Um, Apparently, yeah. which that's not the movie's fault. It's just the way that I absorbed it. Um, so it was more about like how they did it. I really didn't care about like the characters and all this stuff. It was just kind of the plot was secondary to delivering this action spectacle, which it's like, okay, it delivered an action spectacle. Like you got a movie called shoot 'em up. It's going to give you lots of gunplay from beginning to end. But, um, because of the heavy reliance on um, comedy, well, th- but that's a separate thing. Yeah, but that's a se- yeah. That to me was like okay. You know, I guess I, w- I personally I prefer the John Wick uh, right. you know variant of this. One of these days, I need to watch these John Wick movies. I know, right? So do I. Yeah. I, I would argue that John Wick is much slower in pace than the than well, this yeah, movie. yeah, yeah. But I, so I don't think it's comparable. I would say, like I think Crank is its contemporary. Okay, not John. I'll Wick. I'll give you that because you know for what it's trying to be. The, we're, these these are the ones that were like absurd, mm-hmm. right? I don't think, yeah, and I don't think John Wick is absurd. I think John well, Wick is very right. grounded in comparison well, to this what? movie. Yeah, I, in comparison to this movie, are, well, they're a, okay. They're, this, they must be absurd. John Wick takes three movies to do what this movie doesn't want. They take place in a world where every single person is an assassin. <laughs> they are absurd, and that's when I checked the fuck out of those movies. Okay. Is when it was like, See, oh, I homeless like, people? They're all assassins. They're not actually homeless. That's what that movie posits. So, oh. yeah. All right. Give money to homeless people. Yeah, so, yeah. so it was, uh, I guess maybe that, you know, I prefer that one over this one, you know, that, that take on it, you know, as far as the comedy goes. But I think um, the, I mean, I guess I, I go to these like action films to see like the stunt work and it's there. I'm, I mean, I know that it's there, mm-hmm. but it seems like it's camouflaged and assisted by a lot of digital trickery in this one. And so that's kind of like, well, I don't know. That doesn't appeal to me as much as like when I actually see, you know, like long shots of people doing stuff where it's like, that's dangerous. Right. Uh, he actually you know. did that two flips and then kicked that guy in the face. Yeah. yeah. But again, we're talking about technique uh, uh, um, over experience. Experience is the movie is a roller coaster ride from beginning to end. I think if so, that's why I'm like, I'm saying all this, but I'm, I'm still going to recommend <laughs> that you see it because. I think it is delivering exactly what the title says that it's going to give you, uh, which is one extended, you know, um, shoot him up. There you go. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> Bravo. Yeah. You, Colin, you boiled it's it down. An, another, another movie is taking video game logic and applying it to like a feature film, but it's uh, better than watching your friend play a video game. At least I think so, but oh, turns yeah. out all the kids disagree with me. They would rather watch their friends play fucking video games. Kids are Twitch. fucking weird, too. Yeah. yeah. They Hollywood. Would. And they're <laughs> weird. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how Colin ends <laughs> Holly, what did you think um, about Shoot 'em Up? Well, now it, it, I just had this like total realization listening to you talk I understand now why you typically prefer movies that 
have a slow burn because you're actually sitting there analyzing the technique of everything and you need it to be slow so you can have a moment to like take it in and think about these things. And it makes sense to me now why you like slower movies because I've just always been bewildered by that. <laughs> no offense. So I can um, get the technique and the movie at the same time without yeah, having to go back. I and understand watch it. now. Like you need it to be slower <laughs> so you can take it all in because your mind is just doing things that mine's not doing. Mine is here for entertainment. And fucking hell, this was entertaining as shit. I thought this movie was so much fun. I had seen it when it when it first came out, but you know that was so long ago. I, d- I didn't really remember much about it. Um, Unfortunately, that was 14 years ago. Oh, sweet. Because time is a bitch. Sweet <laughs> Jesus, no. Uh, yeah, this movie's fun. This, I mean, it gives you everything that you would expect from a movie like this. Um, but then more, because it's really funny. And, I mean, yeah, some of it is stupid. Like, there were a couple one-liners. I literally rolled my eyes. I'm like, <laughs> calm the fuck on. Like, that's too much for me. But a lot of it is really funny. Um, we all laughed out loud. And it's it's quick i mean it's a, it's a short movie but it, the pace is just out of this world quick it's it's so it's what i needed from this movie i enjoyed the hell of it i really don't have anything like bad to say about it there was nothing that took me out of this movie like you know even even the highs and lows sometimes i'll watch a movie like halfway through i'm like okay it's slowing down a little bit this one i was with it beginning to end it it, it had me so yeah, I think you're going to get everything you expect from this movie. I definitely recommend it. It's it's a lot of fun. It it holds up. It's a good time. So, yeah, for sure. Sean, what do you think? Um, If you told me, hey, we're going to sit down and watch an hour and a half movie that's just gunfights from start to finish, I would normally be like, I don't want to watch that <laughs> whatsoever. There's nothing more... I, I'm boring, more annoying to me than just a movie that just does shooting for no reason for an hour and a half. That's exactly what my husband thinks. That's and why I, he hates this movie. And I, I, I yeah. normally, and I, I, I get don't. That. Right. I feel his pain. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. Yeah, I don't. It, it's so boring to me. I don't feel like there's any, uh, um, you know, stuff like that. I feel like it's easier. It's easy if you just go in and shoot stuff up for an hour and a half and don't have anything else to either say or show or whatever you're doing. Um, so, I mean, I wasn't exactly looking forward to watching Shoot 'em Up tonight. There's a reason I didn't watch this when it first came out. Um, I didn't think it would... No one did. Right. It's okay. I, well, I didn't yeah. think it would, <laughs> like, hold my interest. Like, I thought I'd check out it really soon, or at some point. Um, and boy, hot, hot damn was I surprised tonight. Like, <laughs> hot damn. Hot damn. Like, very surprised. Um... Uh, I had fun with this, like start to finish. Like there was, a, I don't know what happened because so much happened in this movie. There was a certain point in the beginning of this where I was just like, I said out loud, "I'm in." <laughs> like I was all for it, and yeah, this movie's funny. I love like Paul Giamatti as a mustache twirling bad guy. Yes, yes, all give day. me that. All day. Um, I mean, Clive Owen. We've said what we felt about Clive Owen, and we'll just leave that <laughs> as it is. The first twenty minutes of right. this episode. So, right? Yeah, it really was. We went in depth in Clive Owen on this. Our thoughts, feelings, and uh, and everything else. Does he have Instagram? I'm looking him up. Yeah, I, uh, you should yeah. should be more invested in Clive Owen. I, I guess. Should. I should. Um, I'm I'm too no I'm too invested. Maybe, yeah. That's the problem I have. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, surprisingly, like fun, and it is different because, like we discussed, stunt wise and everything, they aren't going for the we're gonna just it's gonna happen and we're gonna capture it on camera in this one take, and we're just gonna be awed by you know the skills of these people. It does rely more on it relies more on editing. Um, I think that's that's the big thing. That's what puts this movie together, and that maybe sound like a dumb thing to say because it's editing, but um, I think this movie is made in editing. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun with this movie. I think they were funny. Um, that fucking baby, like the, just the, the, the <laughs> digital parts you see at certain points are just like, that's the digital baby head just put on there and it looks yeah. <laughs> not good. But again, <laughs> it's all part of the flavor of this movie. Um, and man, that was a good flavor. Uh, I liked it. It's going to be like, uh, it'll be another year before I need to watch something like this. Like I got my yeah. quota. This is I all I need. Yeah, yeah. I got That's my what fix. the audience said. They said, we just had crank, right? We I don't need this yet. Maybe it is. I haven't watched a movie like this in a long time. So yeah. I saw it tonight. And I'm just like, fuck yeah, that got something that I didn't know I, I needed to like <laughs> have sated. So, um, yeah, I really enjoyed this movie. I recommend you watch it only an hour and a half action shoot them up 86 movie. minutes i mean that's great <laughs> yeah. in and out with credit yeah, there's so amazing. much little fun shit in this movie too like yeah i had a blast i recommend it shoot them up go watch it michaela 
I mean, I get a lot of mileage out of Clive Owen. We we talked about <laughs> yes, that before. Yes. I want better for his career. I want him to be as ubiquitous you guys be as his he managers, was. I yeah, think? I feel like, like I could do a, of, I could do a better job than whoever's yeah. doing it now because whoever's so doing it now is not doing a great Clive, job. You need someone who's going to care for you. Yeah, and that is us. Yes, <laughs> that is that is Fuka and Tyson. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that is, we got this. Yes. We got this. <laughs> like I need him to be as ubiquitous as he was in the mid aughts. Like <laughs> I'm sorry, you being the very obvious bad guy that shows up in the third act of Valerian is not cutting it for me. No. Like you deserve better than that. You shouldn't even be taking roles like that. See, this is this is, is, this is why stage? you should hire us. Is that oh, what's happening? I need to know. I need to like know. hype men right yeah, now. Yeah, like I, you deserve better. Like you had better. Why are you? Like I, I, everyone says the Nick is good. I don't know. I'm never going to watch it. I'm sh- I'll take your word for it. Whatever. I think you have to at you this know, point. You just um, proclaimed your love for Clive Owen on this episode. <laughs> yeah. I think you have to watch. I'm going to look into it. I think this movie is a canon movie out of time. It is a canon movie out of time with a huge budget. Like, the, if this had been made in the 80s for half as much, everyone would love it. You know what I'm saying? I I think that, you know, if if what the sixth sense is to stir of echoes, I think Crank is to shoot him up. <laughs> like, I think Crank is the one that got all the attention, but shoot him up's the better movie. You know? Um and you crankheads can come at me on that. I, I, you you know, fucking crankheads. You know, that movie has a, I mean, that got a sequel, so it's got a yeah. giant fan base. I think so, their fans should be called crankshafts. Crankshafts. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm going to go with. You but, can use that. I mean, that's either, it's uh, probably crankers. Right? But didn't the crank guys go to make the John Wick movies, right? No, they ended up, uh, was that Neville Dean and Taylor? Yeah. They ended up with... Uh, no, didn't they do um, like Ghost Rider? Yeah, and Gamer. Uh, yeah, so, they, yeah. Gamer, Gamer so bad. I, oh wow! Oh, <laughs> I, oh no! I, I watched Gamer because Michael C. Hall is in it, and it is a fucking terrible. <laughs> oh, Fuck no. that movie! We it hit is, a nerve. Oh my god! Like, like it's not even worth bringing to the freak show because it's so bad. Like, it's just, I fucking hate Gamer. Sean. You get that out of your Noted. head right now. You get it out of your head. Writing down everything. Yeah. Uh, anyways, if you're a crank person, that's fine. Crank's not for me. Don't try to convince me otherwise it's not my thing shoot em up's my thing i'll die in that fucking hell that shoot em up is a better movie than crank um and maybe that is because i love clive owen so much but also like paul giamatti you don't have a paul yeah. giamatti analog in crank there is no character like that in, that in those movies um and like statham and amy smart is not enough for a movie for me so get the <laughs> fuck out of here with your crank shit yeah. um i i mean this movie, I feel like, delivers on exactly what is it what it says it's going to be. I feel like it suffered from not only coming off of Crank, but, like, there was a lot of movies like this at the time that, like, if you just saw the trailers were very interchangeable. Like, we talked about, sh- like, Smoke and Aces. Like, I don't remember. I know I've seen Smoke and Aces. Don't bad mouth Smoke and Aces. It. No, that's my remember. movie. <laughs> that's mine. <laughs> I know Alicia Keys is in it. That's all I remember about yep, it. Yep. Tom Berenger Casey, Casey is in Affleck. it. Affleck. No. Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck? Affleck is in it. Yeah, Chris yeah. Pine's in it. Like Tom Berenger's in it, in it uh, right? There's a lot of people. Is Tom Berenger in it? No. D- nice. See, we don't remember anything. No, about right? Smoking no, Ray Liotta's so. in it. Yeah. And so is Ryan Reynolds. Um, I did actually like Smoking Ace. Smoking Ace is good. Yeah. I don't yeah. remember anything about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> from the director of The Gray. That's yeah. A, yeah. So yeah. Uh, Joe Carnahan. Joe yeah. Carnahan. Yeah. 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 You know, I think Rock and Roll was around this same time as well, which I really like. Um, this was just a weird subgenre that kind of came out of nowhere, but. I think this is the overlooked one. And I feel like people think they know from the poster what this movie is. And you're kind of right. But but you should still watch it. I think there's too much ugly of that mid-aughts like green filter on this movie. I wish they would dial that back a little bit and just kind of like... Like, why can't I get a movie like this that's like neon colors? Mm, You know? Why does it have to be so washed out? I mean, that's it, right? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But like, it's so high contrast and washed out. And I just like... It's very of that time. They forgot you, know? you could use colors. Yeah, like, they, yeah. They're like, we have... We have it's brown lamp. or green. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because the 90s was like, we're going to go Seven all and nearly black and everything. And yeah. 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 And this this is like, it's too much in this movie. So I really wish that they would fix that. If they came out and said, we're going to do shoot them up in black and white and re-release in theaters, I'd be the fucking first one there to go watch that <laughs> shit. Um, but I think you guys see it. It's a lot of fun. It's stupid. It's funny. It's... It's like I said, it's a canon movie out of time. So go watch, shoot him up. Definitely recommend it. All right. 
All right. Well, I mean, that is, a, yeah, that is a freak show approved movie. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, with a with a grimace. Well, from Colin. because Colin I was like, was I'm like, hate. I know what I'm. I pick for next week, and now I'm like, God damn it, I, this is uh, like so on the nose. So that pick it. So pick something else. Don't I can't. I think I know what you pick. We're for actually watching too. a canon movie. What what did I pick? Oh no, never mind. Oh no, I'm down for. Oh, yeah. I'm always down for a canon no, movie. No, you're not. Like, you're not going to appreciate <laughs> this at all <laughs> because we're going yeah. for like the canon brand that it was actually known for. We're watching Death Wish 3 Ooh, on right. the Saturday Night right. Freak Show. So that's next week. Uh, we right. hope you'll join us for that. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>